In this video, I want to answer a common question that I am seeing from beginning and novice FileMaker users and developers, and they're trying to understand the benefit of a web viewer, and then by extension of that, kind of why is add-ons great? Well, both of these topics are fairly well related because they both together help solve some important limitations of the FileMaker platform. So first off, it's important to understand that as a beginning FileMaker developer, you can draw a web viewer object on the layout. The web viewer object is a square rectangular size and all the space within that object is directly controlled and rendered by the operating system. And of course, how is this different than FileMaker? Because you're in a FileMaker window. Well, really the FileMaker application is controlling what is drawn in that window. However, that little web viewer is kind of like a hole through FileMaker. It's like they chop the hole right out of the middle of the application. And then FileMaker says, I'm not responsible for anything that's in there. The operating system is responsible for it. And so that allows the web viewer to be controlled by the Mac or Windows operating system, maybe even on an Android device on WebDirect. The point is, is that FileMaker is busily focusing on its area, minus any web viewers that may be on the screen. Of course, a lot of beginners are going, well, that's great, Richard, thanks, but why should I care? Well, the interesting part about a web viewer is that you can load an HTML page in there, but that HTML page can have JavaScript in it. JavaScript is essentially a programming language. It allows you to do tremendous numbers of very cool things, and arguably, it's one of the most popular programming languages in the world. In fact, for every FileMaker developer that's out there, there's at least 50 or more JavaScript developers that are out there writing code. Now, if you hang out with more senior JavaScript or even FileMaker developers, you find out they don't really want to reproduce the wheel. Every time they need something, they don't want to code it from scratch. They want to recycle it if possible. So there are huge online libraries where JavaScript developers have built little bits of functionality. Frequently, this functionality is totally free. Now, free could mean it's good free, or free could mean that it's full of bugs and it's worthless, but you can download it and try it and see if it works in your situation. So of course, the beginning and obvious developers are going, well, FileMaker is meeting my needs. Why do I need the web viewer? Once again, it's kind of repeating the same question. And I understand that. I had this question in our live stream not too long ago. Well, the important concept is that Claris makes the FileMaker platform and they don't want to reinvent all the wheels either. So for example, you want signature capture on a FileMaker form. Say someone has an invoice, you print the invoice, the customer takes delivery of it. I can't tell you how many times I sign invoices over the course of a week to prove that I'm taking delivery and I agree to the terms, right? Well, normally that's done with paper, but you can do it online. You could do it with FileMaker Go for many years because with FileMaker Go on an iPhone or iPad, the signature capture was kind of already built into the operating system, but it's not fundamentally built into Macs. It's not fundamentally built into Windows. And so there's all sorts of gaps where you can't get signature capture where you might want it. What if you wanted signature capture on a laptop device or maybe on a laptop with a trackpad on it or something like that so that someone could sign with their finger? So that's been a missing capability. And people go to Claris and say, hey, we have this missing feature. We really want this. Another missing feature for like the last 30 years has been a really great integrated calendar that's part of the platform. Claris never wanted to build it and they were hoping that third-party developers would build this, and they kind of did, except it was always kind of a hack. Well, now with the web viewer and the improvements to the web viewer, starting with FileMaker 19, there are some great things you can do. So for example, you want an online calendar? Well, there's open source calendars that are out there that are easy to integrate to FileMaker. You want signature capture? That's available right now as well. Say you want to take an image into FileMaker, into a container, you want to crop the image. Well, there's a cropper, JavaScript capability that's already been built that works great with FileMaker. I use it. I love it. What about annotating on top of an image? What about using sensors to capture data? You can do all that through JavaScript, and the JavaScript lives inside that web viewer. So it allows the FileMaker platform and Claris to expand all the capabilities of what the product does. Whenever you meet with someone and you say, hey, can you do this for me? And they're a business. And they say, uh, no, I can't do that, right? So you go, okay, well, that's not good. I wanted that. Well, how about we try something else? Can I get this? And they say, no. When someone keeps telling you no, you don't really want to do business with that person. You want to go to a business that's going to say, yes, I will build that for you. 
And of course, with the JavaScript capabilities, with the web viewers and FileMaker 19, Claris and the FileMaker community can say yes to many more situations. There are quite a few more situations we can say yes to, and frankly, not too many that we have to say no to. And so this greatly helps the conversation with your customers. Now, for me, it's an external customer, but maybe you're a FileMaker developer, you're inside an organization, you're what they call an in-house developer. That's great, but you still have a boss. My bosses are my customers. Your boss might be that person that is in the corner office that's above you that makes more money than you do. Either way, we both have bosses. We want to say yes to those people. So why are web viewers great? They give you this ability to bring in all this JavaScript code, these pre-built modules that already exist. So what is the add-on module and why is that relevant? Well, this one is a little easier to understand. Add-on module is nothing more than the idea of taking some pre-built FileMaker code or some objects on a layout or some fields or a field and some scripts, some sort of like little section of FileMaker, putting into a module so people can drag and drop it on their FileMaker solution. So starting with FileMaker 19, Claris gave away some pre-built modules that do some pretty neat stuff, one of which is a calendar. So that big complaint we've had for 30 plus years about, hey, there's no calendar in the product. Well, now there's a calendar in a product. All you have to do is drag and drop it. It's very simple. So in that calendar module is some scripts, some layout objects, and a web viewer. Once again, that web viewer has a JavaScript-based calendar in it. So when you drag on an add-on module, maybe it's very simple and it has a couple basic objects or a couple fields in it, but it might have a web viewer. And using some scripts that come with the web viewer, you could load some JavaScript into it. So the add-on modules are a way of delivering drag and drop functionality into the FileMaker platform. The web viewers, which have really been around for a long time since FileMaker 8.5, well, the web viewers keep getting better and better. And starting with FileMaker 19, they're even more integrated and there's even better communication between FileMaker and the web viewer. So a moment ago, I said that the web viewer itself is controlled by the operating system and FileMaker controls all the space on the window that's not part of that web viewer, right? Well, if the operating system is running one part and FileMaker is running the other part, they're two separate processes that are not necessarily talking to each other. Starting with FileMaker 19, they tighten that communication back and forth. So that allows you to have really crisp, quick communications between the operating system and that JavaScript and FileMaker scripts that are running on the FileMaker side. So it really makes the integration very tight, very seamless, much less fragile than it might have been in previous releases of the FileMaker platform. So a couple parting comments for beginners or novices about web viewers and add-ons. What are the expectations? Well, your expectation should be that you can consume or use add-ons. Ideally, as a beginner, my goal for you would be to basically structure your FileMaker file or maybe start with a copy of FM Starting Point, our free CRM. Start with something, build the basics of what you need, and then drag and drop the add-ons on. So consume or use the add-ons. And of course, along the way, you're going to be exposed to web viewers. You can play with those and learn how those work. The important takeaway is that you're going to see a lot of other FileMaker developers who are much more senior excited about, oh, we're going to build this add-on and we're going to build this add-on and look at these 20 add-ons that we just built and look at this other add-on here. And my add-on is better than your add-on and all this sort of conversation goes on. Understand that you're going to see these people build add-ons, build capabilities. A lot of it will be free. Some of them will be paid add-ons. You're going to give someone three or 400 bucks for some amazing add-on. And I would hope that it works really great if you're paying that much for an add-on. That being said, you should not expect as a beginner to construct the add-on. You're a consumer. You're going to go to the grocery store or marketplace. You're going to download and buy the add-ons into your shopping cart, whatever, take them home with you, try them out. As you become a more intermediate developer, you might run into a situation where you say to yourself, wow, it'd be really great if an add-on did X, Y, Z, and I can't seem to find one anywhere on the internet. Well, what if I make my own add-on? And can I do that? And can I find some JavaScript that someone's already written? And can I legally use that JavaScript and check the licenses at open source, et cetera, right? And so that's a conversation you start to have as you're a more intermediate advanced person. Don't be confused by this when you see people saying, I made an add-on. Because if you're a brand new developer, that's really kind of over your head at this point. We will teach you in other videos how to do that but just for the sake of starting off as a beginner, learn the fundamentals of the FileMaker platform. Understand that the add-ons are add-ons on top to make FileMaker more well-rounded, to give it additional capabilities. 
But as a beginner, you just need to start off with understanding your layouts, understanding relationships, understanding basic scripting and navigation.